Hi there. So the purpose of this video is to take you through how to set up your own government gateway account, or as it's known at the moment, your online tax account. The first part will take you through how to set up a personal digital tax account. And the second part, which is very quick, will take you through the self-assessment adding on to it. OK, so why exactly do you need to have the personal digital tax account? Well, it makes sure that in theory, all your information from the government is in one place. So that can be your um, pension forecast, your national insurance record, um, any PAYE work that you've actually done. So what have people paid you? How much tax has been deducted? Very useful if you don't have a P45 or P60 when you have to do a tax return. And you do have the ability to link the personal tax account with your self-assessment. Um, but don't worry, if you are a client of mine, I will still be doing your self-assessment, even though you might have access to it. So what we've got then is a link down here, which will take you to how to register to get your HMRC services. So if you go to that link, um, then you will come up with this page. And you can sign in, well, you can't sign in if you haven't created one. Problem signing in, well, you will have problems if you haven't created one. So the thing you need to go through to is register for HMR services online. So click through to that. And then it just tells you, you know, who you who and why you might want to set one up. So that's absolutely fine. So you can scroll past that. So what we want to do is we want to set up a personal tax account. OK, if you do need to do a self-assessment tax return, you can add it after this or you can just go through to who needs to set one up. And then you'll have the ability to then um, set up your self-assessment one. But for the moment, we're just doing this personal tax account. Alrighty. So we want to sign in or set up. The idea being then if you click start now. It asks you to prove your identity. There are various different options, etc. But the one that I prefer to people to go through is actually to create your account. And it does look like you're kind of going around in a bit of a loop. But don't worry about it. Just follow the instructions. Click continue. OK. So the ways to prove it, prove your identity, is always really creating the government account. So that's the easiest way. You can go via Verify. Um, I find it a bit slower, but just go with create a government account. It, I like to ask the questions many times. So Now it brings you straight into sign in and then you go into panic mode to say, but I can't sign in because I haven't set my account up. Well, don't worry, little tiny letters at the, at the bottom says create the sign in details. So click on that. OK, so hopefully you'll have an email address. If not, you can't go any further. Uh, so put in your email address. Um, it doesn't matter if it's a UK one or it's an overseas one, but your email address will do fine and click continue. And up here, it will confirm what your email address was. And it sends a email to you giving you um, a confirmation code. It does take a minute or so to come in. So when you've got that confirmation code, it'll be six characters. So click into the box, type your characters, and then off you go and go confirm. And it will then come up with that your email address has been confirmed. It's it's happy. It likes you. All right. So then it asks for your full name. Now, hopefully you know that once you've entered it, press continue. And then it asks for a password. Now, unlike most other systems, it doesn't want a special character and it doesn't have to have an uppercase and a lowercase. So providing it's between eight and 12 characters long and has at least one number and one letter, then you'll be able to check on um, create a password. OK, 
after they've created a password, it then says, OK, we want you to create a recovery word. So if for some reason you've made a mistake on your password, it will then say, OK, do you want to recover your details? And you can enter the recovery word, um, which will then flag up to say, OK, we'll give you your details. Um, it is just one word and it is just um, letters. So it can be, I don't know, where you were born, you know, Clifton. I don't know. I wasn't born in Clifton, so you're OK. Um, so set up a recovery word and then press continue. And it pops up on the screen and it said, well, this is your user ID. Please keep a note of this. Um, it will send it to your email address. So there would normally be an email address in here. Obviously, I've removed a load of personal information because that's not very good. So it will send an email, keep that email, print it, whatever you do, write it down. So you've got three things to write down. And that was your user ID to get into the system, your password and your recovery word. And this is the fourth piece of information, which is your government gateway ID. OK. Click continue. Now, what type of account do you want? Well, you as an individual, or are you a limited company, or are you a tax agent? If you're a tax agent, you should not be watching this. So basically, we go for individual. And now it says, what's your additional security? You think, OK. So it will say, how would you like your security sent to you? Because it will always ask for you for um, um, extra coding to go in. Now, normally, I would always get a text message sent to my mobile phone. So that's what I would go for. There are two other options. I've never used those other two options. So I, some people have used um, an app for a smartphone, but I just go with a text message. It doesn't matter what phone I've got then. OK. You then start to enter your mobile number and send the access code. It's normally immediately the access code will come through to you. Um, some people often try and put in here the number that the message came from, thinking that's the access code. That's incorrect. So open that text message. And I think it's six characters. Could be more than that. Um, so put the access code through to here and hit continue. There you go. And now it's telling you you've set up the additional security. And every time you log into the system, then they will send you that text message to say, OK, enter this and then you're fine. You do have the ability to tick a button to say, remember this for seven days. And you don't have to then re go through this process for getting the text message. All right. So now it wants your details. So who are you? You've already given it your name and it still wants your name again. So. Go with the first name, your last name, your national insurance number, and your date of birth. OK, hopefully you know them. And the version I have picked to go on is, do you have a valid UK passport? If you don't, there are other options of verifying yourself. But for this one, it's whether you have a UK passport. So I click yes and continue. That was just to wake you up. Um, then because of GDPR, it then asks whether you're OK for the system to go to the passport office to verify you. Well, if you're not OK with it, then obviously you would have picked a different method. So most of the time it's yes and it will carry on. All right. So it now asks you to put in your passport details, so your passport number your surname and your given name. So your surname and you know your first name. Now, it is potential that you have a passport in a different name. Now, it doesn't mean to say you're a gun runner, but it could be a case if you might have got married recently and not changed your passport, or for other reasons, you've got a different name in your passport, um, especially those people from overseas that might have a very long surname so you're known by a name first, which might be a short name, and but your passport has your full name on it. And then your expiry date. 
it will go off, it will check all this information, and it comes off with, we've confirmed your identity and it's happy. So then press continue. Now, here's a question for you. It wants to know how you would prefer to receive any notices from HMRC. Notices tend to be things like, we want you to complete a tax return, okay? Or you've been a naughty person, here's your hundred pound fine um, because you didn't file your tax return on time. So those type of things will come through. Now you can opt to have it through your HMRC online account. And what happens there, they will send you an email, which they don't supposed to do, but they will send you an email to say you have a new message and you are expected to go into your online account and get that new message. Or you can go, no, 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 I only want it by post. So mine tend to be, I will put most people by post. That way it's a bit more secure and it's probably easier to spot if there's a fraud. So click by post. Okay. So that set up your personal tax account and these are all the things you can actually do in it. So if you like to move around the country, then you can actually tell them where your new address is via this system. Very good idea because if they send you, you must um, have a tax return done in the last tax year and they send it to your old address. So long as they can prove they sent it to the address they had registered on the system, then you can't have a leg to stand on by saying, I didn't receive it. You won't have received it because you moved, but you're supposed to inform them when you move. So these are all the other things you can do in that tax account. So this is the personal tax account. And this is what my main screen looks like. So if I wanted to go into PAYE, I could see who has paid me for the year. If I click on there, it will take me to the different tax years. I can click on the tax year and then it will take me to the employers that have had me on their payroll system. And then I can go into those employers and see how much they've paid. Um, I can't show you that because I don't have PAYE. I can also link it to my self-assessment and there's details on how I get to my national insurance, etc. If I wanted to set up any benefits, then these are the benefits I could get. So if I wanted to order tax credits, if I had a child, then the child benefit. And it does have a link to your state pension so you can see what your national insurance record is like and how much state pension you may get. Okay. So you can now set up to have your self-assessment linked. It does enable you to do a tax return if you want to, or you can just set through and then you can see what's happened on your tax account. So if you scroll along to the self-assessment, okay, and it's asking, do you really want access to self-assessment? Well, it's best you have access to everything. So I would then click on request. And what happens, it will just say you've requested access and you will get something called an activation code that comes through normally within seven days. Sometimes it can be quicker, it depends on whether there's bank holidays, etc. And that activation code is just a secure method to make sure it really was you that asked for the access to self-assessment. So you go away seven days later, it comes in the post and you come back to the system. You log on to your personal tax account, you go to self-assessment, and it will start to give you what they call the business tax summary. Okay, so here we have down here, use the code we posted to activate your self-assessment. Woohoo! So we'll click through on that. Oops, lost my mouse. And with that piece of paper, you will have the activation code. So type into here the 12 character code and then request access. And that's it. So you now have access to your self-assessment. You can start using that or you can add another tax, etc. That's not an issue. So that's how you then get your personal tax account and you end up with a business tax account for your self-assessment. So in effect, you end up with two tax accounts, but they are linked together 
and you only need to access one and then you get a link to the personal account or the business account depending on which one it takes you takes you into okay so that's the business tax summary that's where you get to afterwards so if you have any questions these are my contact details you could pause me here and then you've written it down um, so there you go so if any problems then please just bung me through an email and um, I'll see if I can help so thanks very much for that cheers and bye